Alright guys, so I know we've got the chimps here and I know they're very exciting, but I just need you to really pay attention to me for, for this in particular. Um, chimpanzees are exceptionally dangerous animals. I know Susie looks very cute, um, but they're between four to, to eight times our strength. So for that reason, the fences are here and the barriers are here. Please do not go over or underneath those barriers, especially with the kids. Just keep an eye on them, please, for me. Um, when we make our way up to the second group, this is still our first group, uh, we'll be on a platform there. Please don't go underneath that platform. Go straight past it and then on top for me. You'll also see when we get there that there's a cage. This is because we have a chimp in that group called Cozy. And Cozy does sometimes give us sticks and stones as very nice gifts. So he will throw things at us. If you don't feel safe at any point in time, that's what the cage is for. You're more than welcome to go in there. If he's got something particularly large, I will ask you to go into there. Uh, with cameras and cell phones, you're more than welcome to take as many photos as you like. And you are more than welcome to put them online. Just please hold onto your belongings. Anything that ends up in that enclosure is gone. They will use it as a toy. You'll never see it again. You're getting frustrated, I know. Um, and... Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Just please listen to me. Yeah. Okay, Susie, you ready? Martha, it's your stick. All right, so we've actually got two females in front of us right now. We've got Susie in the front. <laughs> and we've got Martha. Oh, Martha, what do you You don't want anything. Okay. Um, so Susie in the front here is actually 15 years old, and then Martha in the back there is 24, uh, 24 now, hey? Um, now chimpanzees can live between 40 to 50 years in the wild, so these guys are still actually very, very young, uh, especially Susie. Although Susie does pretend that she's older than she is. I call her our old soul. Um, she might be 15, but she acts like she's 60. No, hey, Grandma. There we go. Alright. So we now have 33 chimpanzees all together at the sanctuary. In this particular family, we've got 13. Um, who's up in the tree? Azzy? Oh, probably. <laughs> um, so in this particular family, we've got 13. And just about every single one of our chimpanzees has been rescued from that situation. Uh, hello, Lily. How are you? Uh, so this is Lily. Lily's also quite young. She's only 12. Hey Lily Pad. Um, so like I said, all of these guys have been rescued from bad situations. Really depends on the chimp on where they've come from. The only two exceptions we have to that are the two little mistakes we've had at the sanctuary. So we are a non-breeding facility, but despite that, we do have two little babies. We've got a five-year-old, and in this group, we've got a six-month-old. Um, after those two, and we also had a miscarriage and a pregnancy skip, we've actually changed our tactic. We don't use contraceptives anymore, which is what we used to use. We've now vasectomized all of our males, except for two. They're going to be done in November. But, yeah. No, Lily. No more babies. <laughs> like, I just want to know. All right. Do you guys have any questions so far? That's what I'm here for. So, please, questions. More than welcome. All right. You can get that. Clever girl. All right, so the two chimps that we've got to the to the right-hand side here, and here comes Tamu. So Tamu's a male. He's the youngest male. He's very, very, very naughty. Mm -hmm. Hey, Tamu. So he's only 11, uh, but you, <laughs> you can see the girls are really checking him out. Mm. Hey, you're in a bad mood. You can see he's popping himself <laughs> up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to have his way with one of the girls quickly. Mm. Martha? <laughs> So Martha and Lily actually have quite a cute story. Uh, Martha used to be a pet. She was actually a pet all the way in Ghana. Um, now pets, wild animals don't make pets. I don't know how often I have to explain this, but it's, whether it's a chimp or whether it's a small little hedgehog, wild animals, is, yeah, anyway. Um, now unfortunately, when a chimp gets to the age of about six or seven years old, so about this size, maybe about your size, they're already as strong as a fully grown adult human. Oh. Yeah. Um, and that's usually also, I'm sure you find the same thing, when they start <laughs> to challenge the authority. Why? Why do I have to do this? No, I don't want to do this. Okay. Um, so they really start to, to push back, basically. Um, and we 
if I'm working <coughs> with the chimps, when you've got an animal as strong as you pushing back, you don't want them to figure out that they can. Um, so oftentimes at this age, the chimps are usually kept in cages, they're abused. Uh, I've even heard cases of them being tranquilized every single day to make them calmer so they're easier to handle. You guys in the sun, you're more than welcome to move over into the shade. Sorry. <laughs> I don't want to get bent. Um, so you're rocking back and forth? Mm. I'll get you out, don't worry. Mm. It is a stress thing. Mm. So Martha's not a normal chimp by a long shot. She's socially very... She just struggles. Um, and that's very much... Sorry Martha. Sorry Martha. That's very much because she was a pet. Um, so Martha was lucky. Her family actually treated her quite well. And instead of doing all those nasty things to her, they decided rather than that, they're going to send her to the zoo in Ghana. The problem was that that zoo, here comes Mogi, that zoo didn't know what they were doing. Now a group of chimpanzees, they already had a group of chimps, and they're very territorial. They don't actively allow new chimpanzees into the group. They don't like it. Oh, okay. uh, it takes between half a year to two years to integrate a new family member. And it's, uh, you're slowly introducing each by each by themselves. They're making your way up until you get to the alpha male. It's a very long process. Hello, Mogs. It's a very, very long process, um, and sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes they just still, after all of that, will not want to chimp in the group. Now with Martha, where are you looking? Hey, stay here. Yo, there you go. Um, with Martha, unfortunately, the people didn't know this. They just took her, and they threw her into the group. Now you can get that orange. It's a nice orange. Mug, it's a nice orange. Don't want orange. Okay. Um... So they just threw her into the group, and unfortunately <laughs> for her, this was the first time she herself had even seen another chimpanzee. Yeah. So not only was she new, she was weird. Didn't know how to communicate, didn't know what to do, very, very um, conscious of that. So of course that family turned on Martha and they tried to kill her. They attacked her. Um, now the keepers then got involved, they then took Martha out of the group, but unfortunately they then locked her in a room by herself. She was stuck in that room for seven years without companionship. Again, imagine one of your children locking them up for seven years in a room with no friends, nothing to do. Um, Samuel, what's going on? There we go. So group two is fighting right now. It's not this group, it's group two. Which is why the boys initially were very upset and now they've calmed down. They've realized it's not our problem. It's not our group. Bazia, do you want to come down? Yeah, come, show us your baby. Yeah. All right, excuse you, Tom. All right, so, like I said, back to Martha. Um, so we think when Martha was in that, um, in that room, that's when she started the rocking. And you see rocking like this, also with humans, human children that have been abused or have autism or something like that, they also rock like this. So this is a comfort thing. This is the equivalent of sucking your thumb or biting your nails or something like that. Um, she's got a carrot in her mouth. You don't like beef butternut. Neither do you. So when we got Martha here, it was an absolute disaster. She was a teenager. Everyone else in this group was babies. Um, Susie was the oldest of the babies. She was five years old. Martha was already, like I said, 12 or 13. So she should have been the boss. She should have been the one making all the rules. But because she had such a bad experience with chimpanzees in her past, she wanted nothing to do with them. She actually refused to come outside for three months. She stuck inside, refused to come out, until eventually we managed to call her outside. Um, but she made a big mistake. Within the first five minutes, Martha touched the electric fence. She got a huge shock. Oh, sorry, boy. There we go. And then, of course, when she was running back inside, she also got stung by a bee. So from Martha's perspective, there was no way. You guys look at the belly. It's a little baby girl. You see the little hands? Yeah. And she's gone. Very protective of her baby. Um, so unfortunately for Martha, she said, no, enough is enough. I'm never coming outside again. It's far too dangerous. I'm done. Now, you guys remember Lily who was here? Lily is 12 years younger than Martha. She was only two years old. And she noticed Martha was really struggling. Martha was going through a rough time. So by herself, every single day, Lily went inside with Martha and started to play with her. 
started to teach her how to communicate with chimpanzees that other chimps actually aren't that bad and eventually Lily put her arm around Martha and led her outside and every single time Martha got away and ran back inside Lily would very patiently go after her and then bring her back outside until she'd shown Martha everything that was out here um, and showed her that the other chimps are actually very nice as well um, and since then they've been very very close friends Martha's actually done a 180 now. She's a problem in the group. Mm. She causes a lot of the issues that we have. So she'll, especially with Mowgli, she'll sit in front of him and she'll bother him and bother him and bother him until eventually he turns around and he gives her a hiding, he gives her a clap, um, and then she starts screaming and she calls all the other chimps in the area, says, look what Mowgli did to me. And, um, <laughs> and then they all fight Mowgli. <laughs> I'm surprised that they're actually very nice together right now. Hey, Max. You want some more? Mm. Sounds good. That's good. So sweet. So mm. And then Lily's now up in the tree. Sorry. So I did mention we're a non-breeding facility. The reason for this is that these guys will never be released into the wild again. This is it for them. Um, so it makes no sense for us to have more and more and more chimps here if we've got nowhere to put them. Um, we'd much rather keep whatever space we have open here at the sanctuary for other chimps that need to be rescued. Um, these guys, if they are born into captivity like Amari and like Tabu, they're now stuck and they can't go anywhere. We can't separate them from their family. Um, so we, we don't want that. You know, it's just the only reason we would have a baby is for the public because we'd try to get more public here. And that, that to us makes no sense. That's not fair on the animal. So again, we'd much rather um, keep space open for other chimps that need rescuing. Now the way that we went about this was, I mentioned briefly, we did use contraceptives. We used an implant and a, and a and the pill as well. What can I say? One in a million shots and we managed to get two. Um, and that's when we made this decision to move to vasectomies. Uh, so we started with Tamu, who was here briefly, and Mowgli. Um, yes, you. <laughs> yes, you. <laughs> so we started with the two of them. And it was basically just to see if uh, everyone told us it wouldn't affect their behavior, but we just wanted to make sure. And sure enough, after the vasectomy, both of them were even naughtier than they were beforehand. Still mating with the females, still very happy with life. But of course, it had been snipped. So now that that was okay and behavior wasn't affected and group dynamics were still the same, we've now rolled it out pretty much to all of our males. And we're very happy with that. Um, no more babies. No more babies. As cute as they are. Now, Mowgli, what's he got? <laughs> ah, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> Eat that very quickly. <laughs> it's not for you, Mowgli. Uh, ironic, she's got a banana, that's why they've. <laughs> um, they do love their bananas. I know it's cliche. I know everyone's like, oh, chimpanzees and bananas. It's, it's true. It is true. No. Mo, it's not for you. No. <laughs> it's fine, you give it to us. No, no, no. Uh, he has to stick to us and what we give him, unfortunately. No banana. <laughs> Mowgli. <laughs> hey, leave her alone. Stop. Max. No, he's fixated now. There's no way I'm going to get him. <laughs> Alright. Um, now, Mowgli's story is actually also quite interesting. Mowgli is actually part of a group of seven chimps that we originally rescued from the Congo. Um, Bazia, the mother of the baby that was here, she's also part of that group of seven. Different places in the Congo, different families in the Congo, but the same story. All of them, their mothers had actually been shot by poachers, specifically for their meat. Meat? Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people in the world that believe that by eating chimpanzees, you gain the strength of that particular animal. No? You want to come to the front? They also believe it will cure you of diseases such as Ebola or AIDS. It's being very fussy. He's not going to reach for food. It has to come to him. Um, now that's definitely not the case. These guys actually share 98.7% of our DNA. Eat your carrot. No. So the difference between me and Mowgli is only 1.3% DNA wise. Um, so because of that, the mut mutation gap for viruses and bacteria is very, very small. So we can actually get pretty much all the diseases they have and they can get all the diseases that I can get as well. So when I've got the cold, I have to make sure I'm wearing gloves. I have to actually stay my distance away from them. Um, otherwise they get sick. Nah. 
to use this. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so, from the poacher's perspective, they actually really look for mothers with babies because they get double profit. They kill the moms, sell them for the meat, and then they take the babies away. And they try to sell the babies alive on markets. Now, if you think from a poacher, they're not going to spend extra time, extra money looking after these guys. They want to make as high a profit as possible. So, these chips that we've rescued, we usually find in crates in the sun on the side of the road chained up, uh, abused, not fed properly, skin and bones basically. Um, we've tried, when we started the sanctuary, we tried to get to a lot of them um, and by the time we got there, they'd actually, most of them had died. Yeah. And if they die, it's no problem for the poachers, they got them for free, so they're not losing money because they haven't fed them. They're really, really tough life. Oh, really? <laughs> you don't want to get that? Mowgli. Mowgli. You don't want to get that. What's wrong? They're lazy. <laughs> lazy. No. <laughs> Other one? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hand delivered food. Why should I stress? Why should I bother? Do you guys have any other questions so far? Really? <laughs> Surprising. Nothing at all. I must do my job very well. All right. Max, <laughs> you're happy. And now in 2012, Mowgli actually had a big, big accident. We're not too sure how it happened. It is most likely, in my opinion, that he fell out of a tree. Uh, but he came outside of the night quarters with a broken leg. And not just like, oh, a little bit, like, broken, shattered. Um, and because they share so much of our anatomy and so much of our um, DNA, we actually took him to the local medic clinic <laughs> and had a human doctor operate on him. Uh, now, technically, that's not, technically, it's not legal. Um, you're not allowed to have a theater with people and with chimps um, or with animals. But they had one in the back that they never, ever use. So we managed to get a, a doctor, a surgeon to operate on Mowgli. And they actually put a steel plate in. Put a steel plate in, binding all those little bits. And then we had to put a cast on. So it went from his ankle all the way up to his hip. Now you're stressing. Um, and we thought this was going to be a disaster. He was a young teenager, you know, he wants to move around. He loved it. <laughs> it was his favorite thing. He walked around with this cast and he was so proud of it. If it got dirt on it, he'd clean it, he'd groom it. He didn't allow any of the other chimps to touch it. He loved this cast. If there was a puddle, he'd go around it. Um, he was actually very upset when we took it off. <laughs> but what was very interesting is what the, uh, what the doctor said. He's like, I've only worked with humans before. An injury like this would take six months to heal. We took the cast off at six weeks. He was done. He managed to heal almost, what, that's three times, four times as fast as humans do. So if you think about it, there is a reason for that. These guys live in the wild. They, they have to walk to go get their food. They have to move around. They're always constantly moving. They don't have a home. What's it? Mm. Are you going to dance for us, Mowgli? <laughs> <laughs> He's a dancing chimp, I don't know why. Yeah, do you want some beef? Um, so, <laughs> a chimp who relies on mobility for so so much of what they do, they can't be in, um, th sorry, they can't be compromised. They can't have a broken bone. They need to heal quickly. Also, these guys are naturally exceptionally aggressive. Apart from humans, they are the most aggressive primate in the world. Um, these guys don't talk it out, they don't hug it out, they don't mm, yeah, do other things to, to work it out. Um, they fight. If there's a problem, if I've got beef with you, I'm going to beat you up. And it's not just one chimp on one chimp. It's Mowgli's got a problem with Martha, but Martha's good friends with Lily, so Lily starts into the fight. But Mowgli's got the backing of Tamu and Marco, and then by the end of it, it's a whole family fight. So it's never little squabbles, it's big, it's, it's nasty. Um, and they get injuries all the time. I don't know if you guys have noticed, Mowgli's got a bit of a, a cut on his back. Uh, that's from a couple of weeks ago. Um, it's all healed, it's fine, but it's still there. Um, pretty much every single day. Hi guys. <laughs> pretty much every single day we find a new cut or in a, a injury that these guys have sustained. Um, and things that, to me, you know, paper cut hurts. So... <laughs> To me, something that Mowgli's got would, would have me in the hospital, I'll have stitches, and for them, they just they just walk it off. In a week, it's all healed up, they're happy, they're fine, moving on. 
um, they're also not really supposed to show weakness. If they show pain, if they're upset with something, again, it's, it's, it's a sign of weakness. And especially for a male shim, that shows the other males are not strong enough. So for us, it's actually quite difficult to know if a chimp is okay or not. We have to look at how much food they're eating. If they're not eating, then there's probably a problem. If they're not putting a lot of weight on the one hand, then there's probably a problem. And because of their hair, it's very difficult to look at things. Um, Tamul that was here earlier, he's actually got a, um, oh, a puncture wound, for lack of a better description. But he's got a hole in his arm. It's about that deep. And that's probably from a bite, from a from a fight and we only found that out two days ago but I'm pretty sure it's been there for a while um, they also know with us they're allowed to show those kind of things because we ask for it so if I ask Marco to come to me I say Marco what's up what's wrong he'll actually show me even if I think think something's wrong but not sure he'll show me on the back of his leg over here there's a cut and then I'll take a spray and I'll spray it so they do know what we're asking for um, a lot of the time you want some more? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? We're good. We've got some people that have just run to the bathroom. Are they coming back? Okay. Okay. Let me find something to talk about quickly. Now, do they ever allow you close to them or do you? Yeah. Yeah. So we don't have any physical contact with our chimps. Mm -hmm. Um, there's always the fence between us, like now. Mm -hmm. I can go in there, but I have to be very careful. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, we're just, we're just very, very careful about it. Um, taking photos is a bit of a nightmare because we do get in between there. But if you've got the camera up, you can't really watch the chimps. So we usually do a buddy system where someone's taking photos and another person is just watching. And if a chimp comes too close to the fence, um, there is a possibility that they can reach underneath the fence and grab you. And then, and then you're done. <laughs> so uh, they'll be like, watch out, Tamu's coming closer. Or Susie's right in front of you. Just make an, keep an eye on her. Um, yeah. Uh, but when they go in.